uh, hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this session. Uh, what I want to kind of really go through is uh, talk about uh, our, our real true journey of uh, going to the cloud and obviously going and leveraging Istio. Uh, so I've been uh, in the journey at FICO. We have been doing this for about uh, eight years. So first things first. Yes, we have Istio in production. We have had it for over a year now. I can tell you that uh, when we were making this decision uh, early uh, last year, this is obviously before the whole uh, pandemic thing, uh, we were having internal debates. This is the right thing to do. Will we be able to support it? Uh, but it's been running. We have deployed uh, in seven regions uh, around the globe, uh, North America, South America, Europe, uh, Asia, uh, Australia, uh, and uh, it's 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 just been absolutely wonderful. Yep, there are some hiccups, and I will you know talk about that too. Uh, you know, for those of you in US, uh, you're probably familiar with FICO. So I just wanted to kind of uh, give a quick background on what FICO does, uh, so that everybody. Can uh, the business we are in and the value of Istio for us. Uh, for the US people, you probably know what the FICO score is. Inside US, it is the number one credit score. It literally 90% of the credit lending decisions are leveraged the score. We do have a platform, we call it the FICO platform, and this is the one that I'm going to actually talk about. This is the one that leverages Istio uh, in the next few slides. Um, we, you know, do a lot of stuff in the financial services market uh, worldwide. We have, you know, 65% uh, card counts, uh, a business number one in the credit accounts uh, management system. Uh, and the other part, or the big part is that we, credit card fraud, we are number one in the payment credit card solution. Uh, and uh, all of these solutions are running on top of the platform, and this is the one uh, that we built and that is leveraging uh, Istio. Now, we are in all the top 100 Fortune 500 companies, right? Leverage FICO software, right? So we've been doing AI for decades. We, we, have, we have 195 patents on AI and machine learning. So this is uh, bread and butter to us. Um, and uh, you know it's a it's a sixty five year old company. Uh, we've uh, so let me kind of go in and walk through the journey to the cloud. Uh, we've been doing uh, this uh, software on premises, deploying at the customer site for for decades and decades. And in twenty thirteen, we made a decision. Okay, we're going to go in and build the service in the cloud. Um, now. In order for us to do that, right, it was important for us to go in and make sure, you know, we were cloud ready. Uh, now this is 2013, you know, this is before Docker, this is before Kubernetes. Uh, so we leveraged Linux containers, uh, you know, LXCs, and did the self-service model. So customer would come in and say, okay, I need, you know, decisioning software, I need, you know, rules, I need, uh, to run this algorithm and we would spin up these containers. And we had to build our own control plane. We had to worry about networking stuff, isolation. We spent a lot of engineering time foundationally building this stuff. And as we built this, we uh, went in and created this foundation on which every on-premises software that we had built uh, was then replatformed on top of this, right? So, right. So, let me, you know, kind of talk about, uh, you know, now, again, as you can imagine, we were building this pretty soon. Docker came in, right after Docker, Kubernetes came in. So we had to go through a journey of rebuilding the underlying services on top of this and start changing our platform to leverage services underneath. Let me quickly, you know, kind of talk about what our platform story basically is. Uh, yeah, you know, underneath we have to do the standard thing. We have to support life cycle stuff, you know, design stage, pre prod, prod, all of that stuff. We have, you know, orchestration engines built in. Uh, you know, obviously we need data ingestion, connecting to all kinds of data sources. 
uh, and, and you know security infrastructure, you know, you know execution fabrics. You know we execute uh, our things in Spark, uh, obviously in containers, uh, some of it in serverless stuff. But the heart of the platform basically is the items that you see in red. We allow our customers to come in, build a solution in a visual way. They can come back and define their rules, could be decision trees, could be decision tables. They can design their optimization algorithms. Um, they could design predictive analytics, uh, um, incorporate machine learning in there, train these models, and then leverage them um, in, in building a solution. All of the software that I was just talking about has been now built on top of this core platform. And all of this running on Kubernetes with Istio. Now, I want to kind of quickly go through, you know, what, what it means, what fundamentally we do on this platform. So requests would come in, and these could be, you know, request response, it could be a batch request, uh, could be a streaming data coming in. And our and this is true for most of the things that we do. Um, we go in, data ingestion happens, we wrangle with the data, we go in and, uh, uh, you know, go into some transformations. Uh, after that, we have to go in, you know, what we call, you know, we have to do attribute calculation and we do feature generation. Uh, then we go in and leverage external data. So uh, credit reports, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but, uh, you know, we get feedback and input into uh, the data sources, all kinds of resources. We use that to actually go ahead and uh, uh, make a decision. As part of the decision, we incorporate uh, different kind of analytics. So again, these would be machine learning models, predictive analytics. We then have some business rules uh, that are leveraged so that you can come back and give a response back to the customer. Now, all of these services, right? are running in pods. All of these, your data ingestion service, your feature generation service, your business rules, your analytics, your external stuff, each and every part of this is actually running uh, on, on different uh, pods. Now, our journey to Istio. So as you can imagine, we are a large part of a business in the financial services industry. So, you know, compliance to us, uh, you know, is, is, is foundational. So, you know, we just can't say this is, we're gonna be PCR or HIPAA compliant. We have to ensure that, you know, communication stuff is encrypted between pods. And, you know, as we were kind of, you know, thinking about, okay, what are we gonna do? We need to solve all these issues. You know, we could come back and do TLS termination in, in, in pods, but we, the biggest problem we had in that decision was it would have caused disruption to all of the customers, right? So not customers, but internal teams for us. They would have to rebuild their software because we were trying to solve an in-home solution. The bigger part for us basically was we wanted to externalize lots of things. So observability, uh, logging, metering, you know, all of these things we want to externalize and this, the best framework, the best approach, the right approach, uh, obviously, was Istio. Uh, so, you know, you are secure by default. Uh, you know, you are private by design. Very, very foundational uh, elements for us. So we have to be and we have to live in a zero trust model. Um, the the Part of the thing that really was wonderful and you know this was one of the worries we had was there was no impact on any of our internal teams we have we have lots of teams building all kinds of services um, and we have solutions running it was a seamless integration it did not matter at all we deployed it in production um, across seven different regions and voila we had all of this uh, security posture it built in and we didn't have to change anything in this. So, you know, uh, the other part that was very attractive to us was, was not just the security part, right? But there are lots of other things in Istio that provide a lot of benefits. So, um, you know, transparent decision capture happens. 
uh, we had built this whole, we had a control plane that built canary deployment and blue green deployment, a lot of work, a lot of code, a lot of testing. All of that is now you know, relegated to uh, into Istio. Uh, one of the things, a couple of things that we haven't done yet and that you know, we're really, really looking forward to. Uh, we started, as I said, like eight years ago, we had to build our own identity and access management service. So we built a security proxy and every service will have to just fundamentally incorporate their security proxy uh, into their software uh, inside FICO. And the problem that happens with that is, as you can imagine, you know, as you fix issues, you find problems, you have, you know, um, security fixes you need to do, suddenly every service has to incorporate the new version. Actually, uh, really, really uh, looking forward to uh, the, the, the uh, leveraging that functionality in this year. Uh, the other part, right, you know, we get asked a lot about data sovereignty. And so the fact that we get a lot of control in, 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 in networking, right, in, uh, we, we believe we're going to be able to leverage a lot in, in making that uh, work for us uh, in, in the customer requests that we are getting. And, and so, you know, foundationally, right, mesh, mesh is the place uh, where a lot of uh, things, things are going to happen. So, uh, you know, there are there are a lot, a lot of lessons learned um, in this uh, uh, year, over a year that we have been doing this. One big thing, right? You obviously, when you look at you know standard issue story, you're going to find out, yeah, security check, right? Observability check. It was very interesting, you know, at least for me personally. I'm sure our engineers were uh, knew that and uh, uh, thought nothing of it, uh, but uh, it. It has it has been incredibly uh, helpful. We before we deployed Istio in some in some of the regions, we were getting this. You know, customers would come in and say, "Hey, uh, some of these requests, um, you know, are not. You know, we're getting timeouts. They well, they were closing the connection because they were not getting the response back. And you know, we'd, we'd look at this controller. We would see no requests coming in, and you go in. You're looking at logs in the VPC. Um, and you're not able to figure out what is happening. So after you know um, deploying the issue, we were able to actually see for for a given customer is that request coming in to the service in the back end, right? Is that hitting in? And clearly, we saw nothing. And interestingly enough, uh, we were able to figure out that there was a bug in the cloud load balancer. Our use case is. Uh, is slightly different than what most people do. We constantly, you know, in our uh, lower environment, we are creating thousands of pods and deleting them every hour. And it's the nature of the business because we go in and spin things on demand, you build things, you try, you test, and then, you know, you uh, destroy them. And we trash the control black plane back then like massively. And it, we had like incredible growing pains in that one, incredible. Uh, you know, getting the configuration correct between the mixed sidecar and, uh, you know, non sidecar stuff, you know, it, it just felt <laughs> truly magical. It was it was a lot of work uh, that it had, uh, had to be done. So one of the things that we were lucky was we, we realized that if we're going to go in and bet the farm on this, we needed partnership to evolve with this. Um, you know, how to go in and update because, you know, we are keeping up with the latest version, how to make sure and test and how to update this and work the new use cases we are trying to do. Um, we got a lot of help from the Titrate folks. Uh, they understand this year really, really well. They're also helping us foundationally uh, fine tune and decrease the footprint as as our request load increased. Uh, you know our uh, Istio control plane has increased dramatically, and you know so we had to kind of tune that so that we could go in and increase the the footprint for that. So it's been uh, it's it's been very very uh, interesting. Uh, we're glad that we have kind of done it, and we are in the process of as I said earlier leveraging it to do a whole lot more 
um, it is going to be, you know, it's like a foundational part, uh, core to what uh, our platform now is. So that that is it.